Hello. Okay, so we have been waiting to do this little project, and today's the day. We can't wait any longer. Mommy's belly is growing. <laughs> Ruby Jane has inspired a new project for us. We're wearing our aprons. They're very fashionable. Mm-hmm. Little 50s style. Little homemade goodies. My hair doesn't What happened to your hair? I put it in a half bun and then it fell. Oh, that's <laughs> not even a half bun anymore. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you a little bit about a, a butt. <laughs> <laughs> not a butt. I'm going to show you a little bit about... <laughs> there you go, Mom. ...what we're going to be doing. And I've got one started. Like, every good chef has one in the freezer ready to pop out, right? Except usually you have one in the oven. But Well, I got one in the oven, but... <laughs> Sidetrack... Okay, Lillian, what do we have here? So what we have here is shea butter. No, that's the cocoa butter. That's the cocoa butter. <laughs> because, this, look, check out check out this cocoa butter down here. So, this is the cocoa butter. Pull it up with your hand. Show, show us a piece of it. What's it look like? Now rub it on your arm. It starts okay. to melt a little bit. The more heat you put on it, it just melts naturally on your natural body heat. And we have some really great characteristics we're going to talk about with the cocoa butter, why we use cocoa butter. Now, a lot of us use That's cocoa butter dish. in a lot of our beauty products, or we see that cocoa butter is good for lotions and stuff. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why we chose cocoa butter as one of our ingredients. The second ingredient is, is shea butter. And see how it's um, moldable, it's malleable, it's squishable. Um, you can pick it up. Go ahead and pick it up, Lily, with your hand. And it's like can, a thick lotion. Yeah, it's already ready to use. Super hydrating, extra moisture. That's going to go a long way. <laughs> so you might as well rub that on your arms. <laughs> And shea butter has a lot of really great qualities as well. What is it, Tyler? Uh, I'm going to take the baby to put her sleep. Okay, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tyler's been so good. He's walking the baby. He's giving her a walk. Yeah, and with Jonas. Left route. Oh, and uh, they're being good big brothers right now. So we are using shea butter for, where are we at? Shea butter. And we have a big bucket of it down here, Lily. Look. You can use this ice cream scooper, basically, to just scoop it out, like a big ball of ice cream. So it's really moldable. It's really great. Let me just throw that back in there. <laughs> we'll use that for our next uh, batch. And I'm going to go through a little bit of um, reasons why we chose the shea butter as we continue. So. Also, in addition to our cocoa butter and our shea butter, we have a giant container of jojoba oil, of golden jojoba, and argan oil, 100% pure argan oil and pure jojoba oil. Now, a lot of us might have heard a lot about jojoba and maybe even argan oil in our hair products. So I'm going to talk with you a little bit about why I chose those as well to um, work in our project. They're very, very good for the skin, if you see what I'm getting at, very the skin, hydrated. and the hair as well. So perfect for um, basically moisturizing every bit of your entire body. Okay, so the last thing that, oh, I'm going to change it up a little bit because I did get a giant container of rose water, which smells amazing. I feel like we have to do the smell test every time we do it. Do the smell test, Lillian. Oh, yes. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, I love that. I love that smell. I feel like it brings me back. It's like vanilla extract. It smells so good, but you shouldn't eat it alone. You shouldn't eat this at all. You can. You don't. You, know, oh, you, you can, you, you actually. Can See, we're going to learn. We're going to teach, and we're going to learn. So you actually can drink rose water. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit. So yeah. We're learning. Learn time is well. learning. Um, so I'm going to add that into my project. 
And then we're also going to add these essential oils of frankincense, um, jasmine, mastrante, mastrante, I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I like to say it, and helichrysum. That's not how you say it either, but heli, helichrysum, and lavender. Lavender. Because why favorite. not? Hello, lavender. So, we have our essential oils, we have our um, seed oils, we have our, our nut <laughs> butters, <laughs> I don't know what kind of thing to say other than that. Our uh, butters, our <laughs> moisturizers. And if you see, if you see what all these little things have in common, go ahead and, and write it down there. What do you think that we're going to be making? Oh, like, we got some bananas up there. What do you think, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what do you think we're going to be making? It has super moisturizing. moisturizing. It's good for the body, it's good for the hair, specifically. it was inspired by Ruby Jane, so we are, yep, Asia, it is my belly butter, it is time that we have to make some, I have gone through four babies so far and no stretch marks on my belly. So I am going to continue to not have stretch marks on my belly <laughs> so that when I am done having these babies, my belly can be stretch mark free. So I'm going to continue making my belly butter and I'm going to tell you why it works so well. Yes. Okay. So Lillian, um, as I'm talking, as I'm going to set the phone down, we are going to need to use the mixer. So it's going to get a little loud. Lily, I didn't get the little whip the whiskey whiskey the whisk the whiskey the whisk, not the whiskey not the, whiskey. the whisking <laughs> attachment we need the whisking attachment to make it nice and fluffy all right perfect okay so go ahead and pop that on and i have this um, already melted this is the cocoa butter and i melted it on a double boiler basically with uh, just water in the pan boiled the water and the steam uh, heated up. heated up the cocoa butter because you could see how hard it really was you can't really mix that without it being uh, more of a liquid i don't know why my camera's fuzzy oops oh, you turned it around. oops i turned it around okay <laughs> You can't really mix it without it being more of, an, of a liquid state. So yeah. I, on a very, very low heat, um, made it a liquid. So we're not going to lose any of the properties of boiling it or getting it in a high heat. If you put it on high, it's going to boil all of the moisturizing stuff. Yes, yeah, so it has so. a lot of really great properties. And if you put it on high, we don't want to get any of those out. So go ahead and pour. We have two cups of cocoa butter. It's 100% pure cocoa butter straight from the cocoa <laughs> nut. <laughs> then Lillian's going to scoop out the shea butter and we're going to put it in here as well and we're going to let that kind of meld together. Now the shea butter is really already moist. Don't let it plop because then it will splatter. But the shea butter is already really moist um, and like a very, very soft texture. I can whip that. But I wanted to add the cocoa butter because of some of its good properties. And I don't want the cocoa butter to kind of overpower the shea butter in texture because sometimes it can be really hard to scrape out of the jar. And that's another reason why I'm going to add the rose water to make it a little looser. And also the other two oils helps kind of thin it out a little bit. But we're going to melt these two together, so really, really low heat once again. And so I'll turn this on, and as we're doing this, um, we're just going to melt this together. And we'll pop this in the freezer, because once it's nice and mixed together, then we're going to put it in the freezer to help it cool a little faster. You can leave it sitting out. It will harden in room temperature, but it takes a lot longer. So I already have one in the freezer. It has been in there a little longer than I anticipated because I had to go get the kids from school and now it's probably frozen, <laughs> but it's okay. It, as soon as we pop it out, it's going to be fine. We're going to blend it up with some other of the products. So I'm going to try to set this up so we can still see what is happening here. Hopefully the light isn't too crazy. Um, let's see. All right, Lillian. Oh, there we go. There's the mixer. Let's see if we can see the mixer and you. Yeah, we're going to heat this, this bowl up so you'll see some steam rising up. 
but it's not going to be this. This isn't going to be boiling. It's going to be just the steam in the double boiler. So now I'm going to grab the bowl from the freezer. Yes. It is pretty much, let me just show you here. It is pretty much uh, solid, but you can see the, the I'm going to, see there, it becomes liquid. Here, let me just lift this up so I'm just tip the bowl. When I tipped it, you could tell it's still liquid inside. And so it's created basically an outer layer of solid coagulation, basically. It um, is starting to harden. And, oops, I'm trying to get my phone set up here. Sorry, guys, so that I can mix it for you. All right. So what I'm going to do, see, isn't that crazy? It's like ice. It's like ice on top. But it's like all liquidy on the inside. It's like clear and ice. This is a little complicated to show with the camera. I am trying to be. I can pour this in my I'm trying to help out as much as I can. Okay, what you do with my. Oh, here it is, spatula. So maybe we'll just take this off so we have a little bit more room. Go ahead and pour that in the bowl. And we're going to just scrape the edges so that all of that frozen mixture comes off here. Let me hold it for you. Yeah, I got a little bit extra frozen. <laughs> it looks like lemon curd. Lemon curd? Yes, lemon curd. It is funny that you are 11 and you know what lemon curd is to be able to compare it to something. <laughs> yeah, I'm smart. <laughs> we bake all the time. So, I typically only want to leave it in maybe 20 minutes in the freezer. But, like I said, I had to go run and get the kids, and they, they have a life of the, the baby was being fussy, so I was trying to make this a little bit simpler by not having to wait for it to melt and then freeze again, so it's really easy, actually. I'm making it look a lot harder than it is because I have a tiny spatula, but it's coming off the bowl pretty, pretty easy. So we're popping that. Mommy got the tiny spatula in the world. I got the tiny spatula that I bought for the kids at Christmas time. When we were like five years old. Yeah, so really, it's a it's little- a violet spatula. It's a little inconvenient for actual function, but I decided to use it anyway. And it was cute because it had Santa Claus on it, even though it's February. So I have this whole bowl of cocoa butter and shea butter. It was two cups of cocoa butter and two cups of shea butter. And I melted it all down together, put it in the freezer, and here, what? I'm going to stir this. Okay. And um, that's all we have so far. So the next part of the ingredient is adding the jojoba and the argan oil. But I'm going to start mixing this a little bit so we can get it uh, in our nice whipped um, formulation, I guess. I like it to be whipped. You can kind of see that the... Shea butter isn't like melting, but it's going down to more of a liquid form. Can you so. speak a little louder because they can't see you, so they can't read your lips. Um, you can kind of see down here, I think, yeah, y'all can see. It's not really melting, but it's going down to more of a liquid form. So it's going to be a little bit until it melts all the way. Okay, so I'm going to do a half a cup of my jojoba. Again, I'm going to tell you all the reasons why we're using the different oils as we mix this up, but I'm, I want this to be low enough that you can still hear me. So we have a half a cup of the jojoba, and I'm just going to mix that in. Since it's a liquid, it's easy to already mix in, and you don't have to worry about it being chunky. And then we have the argan oil, and it's a half a cup of the argan oil. Okay, you can go ahead and pour that in, babe. Did you get it? <laughs> go, go, gadget arms. <laughs> now, it's all mixed in, but because it was cold, I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to scrape it along the bottom to make sure that anything um, chunky. anything chunky is not still um, sticking to the bottom. Scrape that off, and then I'm going to bring my mixer up to a higher speed so it can start whipping and we can make kind of like a meringue type texture so like we're icing like a whipped icing I like whipped cream and don't mind the crazy sound of my mixer it's, it's very old it's not 
very old. It's old. I got it 13 years ago. <laughs> Before mom and dad were married. No, as a wedding gift. Oh. <laughs> all of these. I use that all the time. I love it. So, like I it's said, very old. <laughs> not very old. Because <laughs> I'm a Tyler. So, I have some of that extra. The thing I love about, one of the things I love about making this from scratch is that when you are like scraping the bowls and stuff, you get it on your hands and you just go ahead and rub it directly onto your skin as it as it is. So Lillian is still mixing up. Here, let me come over here. Lillian. Oh, hi Shalina. Yeah, Virginia, awesome. Okay, so Lillian is mixing up our second batch. And we make actually an eczema cream. So mm -hmm. I put a couple different oils in the eczema cream. I make that for Tyler. I also use it as a for the baby. And I put lavender, cedarwood, and melrose in that body butter. And there's one reason, one thing I don't use in my body butter. Now I think it's something that's really common for a lot of people to be like a major go-to for everyone. I'm trying to get this crazy light out of my face <laughs> and it's not focusing either um one thing i don't use in my but my belly butters body butters body creams eczema creams face creams nothing like that um is cocoa butter or um, coconut oil sorry coconut oil and even though coconut oil is really great for many things it is not non-comedogenic can you make an all-natural tanning oil is that a thing? I probably can. Um, probably. Let's share it to share it to the women to women group. Okay, I will do that. I will do that. Um, I'm also gonna post it on my homemade essentials. And this is one of the things that Lillian and I are starting is an L2 Productions YouTube channel. So we are going to be posting our videos, Lillian, on our L2 Productions <laughs> video uh, YouTube channel. But, uh, one of the reasons I don't use, <laughs> as soon as I figure out how to make a tanning oil, I'll let you know how much it would cost. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it's starting to whip up, and it is looking like buttercream icing. So, it you're... so good. It looks really good to eat, but you should not eat that. <laughs> so, here, I'm going to stop it for a second. Just so you can see the thickness, oops, I didn't lift it up. So you can see the thickness of it, and it's looking like it's got a little peak. So if you know, oops, about meringues, it has, let me take this like, off and I'd show like you. It has a little peak, so it's getting whipped, but I'm going to add my rose water to it, and it's going to get really whipped because when it, when I pour it in the jar, it's going to get a little bit firmer because of that cocoa butter. The shea butter is going to keep it soft, and the other oils are going to keep it soft. Yes, and the, but the cocoa butter really does take over. Not only does it take over with uh, the scent, because it does smell like chocolate, but it also takes over with the hardening. So this is going to help it be a little bit more whipped and stay a little softer, because when I made my... Uh, night face cream. I used the rose water in it and it was amazing. It was, uh, it the, was really the so texture good. was so, it was just like, it's like that whipped yogurt. If you've ever tried that whipped yogurt, it was so smooth and creamy. So I'm changing my recipe up a little bit and I'm going to add the rose water to this recipe. And again, I'm going to start slow so that the water can get mixed in because you know, water and oil don't like to mix. <laughs> So we're going to whip it all up together, and, and once I get it all in the consistency that I like, I'm going to add my essential oils, and I'll tell you how much I add of those here in a little bit. And a little bit really does go a long way with that. So here I'm going to turn this up, and you can see it's already starting to get a little bit more whipped. Okay, so some, so Lillian's got this almost melted down for the next batch. Okay, so... You can see that the um, oil is not boiling at all. It is just uh, melting a little bit. So 
Um, I, I, am, <laughs> I have a lot in there, and I fill up this jar, and it lasts me for months. Um, however, I might use a little bit more of it <laughs> now that I can, and I'm going to have a couple extra jars available. So, um, here Lillian, let me see if I can, there's something else I was going to say, I forgot. Alright, whip it up really, kind of a higher speed so we can whip it like meringue. Look how it whips it. It looks really good. There it's all done. Okay, so we're going to need to put that in the freezer. Now, if you just turn off the heat, let it sit for a while. Let because it, if you put it glass right after it's done getting heated up, <coughs> it could explode. Well, true, but it is tempered glass, and it's not supposed to do that, but we are going to take it off the heat just in case <laughs> before popping it in the freezer because it is very, very warm. Uh, the glass is very, very hot to the touch, so we're going to cool it, and then we're going to put it in the oven. So you want to take that off and just set it, or you want to take this and I'll take it off? I'll take it off, because, okay, where are you going to set it? Okay, set it right there. Okay. All right. We got that. It's still boiling. So, here, do you want to take this, Lillian? Hello. Okay, I'm going to read to you a couple of things of why we chose the ingredients that we chose for our, our belly butter. What? You got that? Yeah. <laughs> I, have a, I have like a shining light coming down. It's a halo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I mentioned that we're using is the cocoa butter. Now, a lot of us know for the belly butter, especially during pregnancy, we use cocoa butter, right? But we don't really know why. I'm just checking this. You want to check this? Look how fluffy it is. Here, take it down. <laughs> okay. How good that is. Turn it all the way. Look how fluffy it is. I just can't get over it. It smells amazing. It smells really good. Okay. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit here. Let me show you just to show you the fluffy. Let me show you the fluffy. Okay, so you can see the It's peak. like egg whites. Mm-hmm. It's so creamy. You see that? It's so creamy. So now I'm just going to blend in my essential oils and then I will talk with you just a little bit about why we chose what we chose without the blender being like so crazy loud. Um, basically it's 10 drops of each oil and I'm going to start with the <laughs> with lavender and Lavender is excellent. All of these oils are excellent. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All of these oils are excellent for skin. So that's why I chose them. There's a lot more really great properties each one of them has, like antibacterial, antifungal, um, anti, a little uh, antiseptic. Everything is really great about lavender, especially frankincense, um, you know, cell healing and basically repairing. Um, mutated cells and getting rid of the bad and bringing in the good but also um, it has so many so many really great qualities Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. that also um, help repair stretch marks so it helps repair reduce existing stretch marks but also it's really great for skin to prevent new ones from Forming. Um, it's great for reducing scars. There's been a lot of people that I know that have reduced um, surgical scars and stretch marks just by applying frankincense to them. So, of course, we're going to add that into our belly butter that is specifically for stretch marks. Then we're going to add some jasmine. Jasmine has some really great qualities, but also it just smells amazing. It smells like a flower. It smells so good. Here, you want to smell? Oh, it smells so good. Um, it's kind of a pricey one, but it's definitely worth it in my body butter. So we're going to cover up that scent of frankincense, because frankincense isn't really the great scent. This one is a really lovely floral scent. Now, some oils are thicker than others. You can see it's very potent. One takes a little bit longer for them to drip out. Two, three. You don't want to shake it. Four, because you want to have that full drop. Five, six... six. Seven, Seven, eight, eight nine, nine, 
And you get a little impatient. Ten. Ten. Mm. And it smells so good. This is what it looks like. It's got a bunch of oil on top. And we have Mastrante. And this is um, really, really good for skin. Lots of great properties for your skin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and if the last one gets in there, that's okay. It doesn't have to be super exact. Then we have Helichrysum. Now this is excellent for pretty much everything under the sun. Super expensive oil, but doesn't really have a great smell. It's not a bad smell, but it smells like a tree. It, yeah, it smells <laughs> like different. Tree if you know what Copaiba smells like or tastes like, it's like that. But it has so many really great healing properties. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That it's just going to be perfect for pregnancy belly. Okay. Uh, I think that's all of the oils I wanted to use. I typically do use geranium because it smells really good and it's another floral scent, but I ran out of it making my soap. So if you guys want my soap, I've used all the last of my geranium in it. So still for sale. Um, we're going to just mix this up. Blend. You can see that it was starting to harden a little bit. Can you really want to pay attention? No, I'm not. Maybe you're not paying attention. It was starting to harden a little bit, so we're just going to mix it up, make sure all the oils get blended in, and it's a thorough, thorough mixture. Thorough, guys. <laughs> Alright, that looks good, and it's very, very creamy. My belly is going to be happy, happy, happy. Now, right now, it seems like... I'm just going to, here Lily, can you hold this so I can have more hands like that, see it? So I'm just going to mix it up, and I'm just going to kind of fold it and make sure I got everything from the bottom all mixed in. Again, a larger spatula would be nice <laughs> if I would have had a larger spatula. But I'm just going to basically fold everything in and make sure everything is all nice and mixed make together. Make sure get to the very bottom. Yeah, and you can see it's kind of chunky because of that stuff that was left on the bottom. So we may mix it up again just to whip it, um, all those chunky parts, because that's the cocoa butter that kind of settled out. But even so, with it going in a jar, when you put it on your body, it's going to melt. That cocoa butter, even if you had it without it melting, without it being blended with anything else, you're going to grab a chunk of it and it's going to melt as soon as you put it on your skin. It's really great for a shaving cream as well because it moisturizes in the shower. It lets the water bead off and you can just take a chunk of it and as it melts in the shower, it's just really delightful. Okay, so I'm going to blend this one more time and make sure everything is nice and mixed up. And whipped. Okay. Okay, so while that's whipping, I'm just going to go over a couple. Uh oh, maybe I can oh. <laughs> Turning the camera around. Yes. Can you maybe move over here so that it's not so loud? Hopefully, it's not so loud. Comment if you can't hear. If you can hear still with that mixer running, I know it's a little obnoxious, but I want to tell you a little bit about, again, <laughs> why we chose what we chose. Try to get that in the video so you got a little bit of knowledge behind where it is that we're making and not just the fact that we're making something. There's a reason why I chose what I chose for my ingredients. So the cocoa butter, we've heard a lot about it, actually does come from the cocoa bean, um, the little thing, you know, that you make chocolate with. What's going on? I'm just getting closer. Okay, it's like, <laughs> um, and it has a lot of the same benefits that chocolate does, and sometimes even like the dried cocoa powder itself has more antioxidant benefits than the cocoa butter, because that's what's left after taking out the cocoa butter and the coconut, or the cocoa oil, you have the dried cocoa powder left. So, that's what we have, that's what we cook with. You can eat this cocoa butter. You can cook with it, you can use it as butter in your pan instead of regular butter. It has a lot of really great properties. Let's check this really quick. I don't want it to get overwhelmed. It looks really, really good. 
Now it might have some chunks in it and that's okay because like I said, they're gonna melt down anyway. It looks really, really awesome. So fluffy. So, so fluffy. And I'm just going to pour it. Like I said, it's gonna harden. It still isn't all the way to its room temperature. So I'm going to pour it. I still have a little bit left in my jar, but I'm gonna just pour it right on top. It's okay. There's just barely anything left in there. So I'm gonna fill the rest of my jar and you can see just how it it's so soft it just folds right in and then I'm going to grab a couple other jars I have stashed and fill those as well so again these will be this can be for sale if you guys want um, to add your own oils you can message me what you'd like I sell it for five dollars every four ounces this is a 16 ounce jar so it would be a $20 jar of course this is glass so then I don't really have a lot of these jars themselves available but I do have eight ounce jars available and they're the same amber except they are um, a certified plastic for essential oils so they're the same thing they're just not glass but this is the one that I personally use for my personal body butter and it is super super yummy look how much I have left so I still have a ton left I'm gonna have to put in a couple other jars um, but again let me tell you now that it's quiet why I use um, what I've been using again <laughs> so I have my notes here just to help me remember everything because it has so many really great properties and every time I do this I say it has so many really great properties you just Google it and look it up. But instead of going through the hassle I want to just let you know straight from me um, the properties and why they're so great. So it is completely edible. You can eat it like I said. You can cook with it. You can, um, it, I mean it, it tastes like chocolate. It smells like chocolate. It's made from the same plant as you make chocolate from. Um, just isn't probably something that you normally want to do <laughs> but you can you can do it um, it is a fat source used to make chocolate healthy fatty acids naturally healing for dry sensitive skin so your skin um, absorbs it it's really natural um, it's really close to your skin's natural oils so your skin will naturally absorb it what is it baby hungry oh, come on out is the baby away Okay, I'm almost done, baby. I'm almost done. Okay, <laughs> so it's a natural skin moisturizer. It's got a very, very smooth texture. So even though, here, come here. I'm going to grab a little piece. And basically, eat it, eat it. you can um, just go ahead and melt it in your hand. It will, like, it will melt as you use it. So it's really a really great skin moisturizer. And like I said, you can take a chunk of this and you can use it in the shower and you can shave with it. It's really delightful, actually. Um, it is a high antioxidant food and a high content of polyphenol flavonoids, so antioxidants, which we know attack free radicals, they lower inflammation, they improve immunity and improve your heart health, actually. So chocolate is good for you. Um, the raw cocoa butter uh, has more fatty acids than like high heat cocoa butter. So if you've cooked it in a high heat, um, it's it's going to remove some of those fatty acids. It's going to remove some of the health benefits. So that's why we didn't want to cook it in a high heat. We just wanted to melt it down to basically a room temperature or to a skin temperature basically. A little warmer than room temperature and then blend it in. It prevents dry, uh, skin dryness and peeling. It helps heal from the inside out. So you are allowed to eat chocolate. Here, hold this up a little bit because I feel like I'm looking down on everybody. No one can see it because of the comments and stuff. Oh. So I have to. Okay. I just feel like I'm looking down on everybody. I can um, it like this. It's a great source of antioxidants that are found in cocoa beans like dark chocolate. So you can rub chocolate on your skin. It can be nourishing and healthy for you and you can eat it and it can be nourishing and healthy for you. Um, the really dark chocolate. So less sugar, more of the cocoa bean. Um, saturated fats are, an excellent, uh, are excellent for healing dry, cracked skin because it's easily absorbed. So the saturated fats are actually good for you, the ones that are found naturally in the cocoa butter. 
and it remains on the skin for many hours. So even after you put the belly butter on, you go and take a shower, the water's still gonna bead off. So it's really great if you're gonna try to protect your skin in the summertime from the sun, from the wind, even in the wintertime from the cold and the wind and the harsh elements, it puts that extra layer of moisture directly onto your skin and protects it from all the environmental effects. Um, it's much less irritating for sensitive skin and I personally have sensitive skin and like I said we're making eczema cream. You can use this for psoriasis, rashes, burns, um, <clears throat> infections, anything that is an ailment of the skin, the cocoa butter is excellent for. It locks in that moisture and it actually helps reduce inflammation. It helps um, reduce damage and cell mutation. Um, it is free from harmful irritants or ingredients. It is from Central and South America, Mesoamerica and the Caribbean. So that's where you can find a lot of the cocoa beans. Um, it heals chapped lips. So it's emollient. It adds a protective layer of hydration to your lips. So it's great for, like I said, um, sun damage, cold temperatures, indoor heating, um, signs of aging. So we use it in our chapstick too. Where are you going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I need a new cameraman. I'm a woman. I know it's a lot of information, but these are the reasons why I pick cocoa butter, and and there's a lot more reasons. Um, it has better collagen retention and production. Um, it has better hydration. It fights um, signs of aging, and improves skin elasticity and tone. So many things that this this one product will do. Um, let's see, polyphenols diminish the signs of aging, soothe dermatitis and rashes. It fights chronic diseases and cell mutations. So all of these are going to be really great to rub on my little baby belly. Um, it's a natural treatment for eczema and rashes. So you can take the cocoa butter and rub it directly onto your eczema or psoriasis, the rashes, the burns. And it's going to heal, protect, and... and um, really soothe that dry cracked skin and it's not just going to put a little top layer over top of it it's actually going to start healing it and get deeper into the skin treats mouth sores uh, like i said makes a great shaving cream um, and improves your heart health which is super crazy which you normally wouldn't think of just like a cocoa butter being able to do but because it's part of the cocoa plant it really does lower inf uh, inflammatory markers in Atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. So, therefore, it's an anti inflammatory food. And uh, the dried cocoa powder has more anti inflammatory properties, like I said before. But Lillian is getting bored with all of my. No, information. Tyler's had to hurry up because Violet's hearing you. Oh, okay. Violet is hearing me. Okay, so that's just cocoa butter. So mm. this is why we add cocoa butter to our belly butters, to our stretch mark creams. We have cocoa butter based uh, lotions out there. Everyone wants to add cocoa butter to their formulations, to their skin care because of so many really great properties it has. The other one, what is it Lillian? Grandma said hi. Oh, hi Grandma. The other one that's a main constituent of our belly butter is the shea butter. It's an all-natural vitamin A. Um, it's from West Africa, so if you see the people, you know, kind of living in the desert, their skin is amazing, their hair is awesome, uh, they seem to never age. The shea butter is working wonders for their skin. It aids in many skin conditions, blemishes, wrinkles, stretch mark prevention, muscle fatigue, dermatitis, and radiation treatments, just to name a few. It has immediate softness and smoothness, extremely moisturizing and hydrating. The National Center of Biotechnology Information published a study indicating shea nuts and shea fats, which is shea butter, uh, constitute a significant source of anti-inflammatory and anti-tumor promoting compounds. So yeah, put that on my skin when I'm growing a baby. Anti-tumor, yes please. American Journal of Life Science Shea Butter boosts collagen production, demonstrating anti-aging properties. Shea butter is like the end-all be-all for skincare products. Cocoa butter, shea butter, both of them are really, really great. I personally prefer shea butter, one, because it's already in a very soft texture and it already feels like lotion. Two, it doesn't have that really strong smell of cocoa butter like chocolate. Sometimes you just don't really want that and you can add your own essential oils to it. I'm almost done. So it doesn't block the scent of your essential oils that you want to add to it. And it's very, very so soothing. Grandma said we are going to be going live in a few.
Okay, I'm going to watch as soon as I'm done with this. Um, it's rich in, in steric oleic acids, vitamin E and vitamin A, in amounts, um, let's see, and it has high amounts of saturated fatty acids like MCT oil compared to other source lipids like grapeseed, olive, and canola oil, and FDA has classified it as grass, generally um, regarded as safe. The Journal of Oleoscience says she, shea nuts and fats are found to reduce inflammation and they are a significant source of anti-tumor promoting compounds such as cinnamate esters, the same thing that is the great health benefits of cinnamon. So not only are these really great just for skin care, Lily, stop moving, and they are really great for actual other health benefits that have been proven by other scientists. So it's not just me saying it. Grandma so says such good information. I love your butters. Yeah, they're so, so, so smooth. It provides anti-aging properties, helps cell tissue regeneration and softening of the skin, therefore reducing wrinkles and boosting collagen. So that's what's really great about adding it to your belly butter when your belly is growing. It helps that cell regeneration and reduces that stretchingness and you don't have to create stretch marks on your belly. It actually helps with that cell regeneration to actually make new cells instead of stretching them out as your belly grows. One of the key ingredients to your belly butter, it's the shea butter for that reason. Moisturizes both the scalp and the hair, alleviating dandruff in harsh climates. Relieves windburn, sunburn, winter dry skin. Um, re reduces stretch marks and scarring and cellulite. So if you've already gotten stretch marks from your previous pregnancies, go ahead and rub that shea butter on there. It's gonna start reducing it. Add it to that frankincense and you're gonna have a really like miracle cream for your stretch marks, your scars and apparently your cellulite. <laughs> um, it's really great to prevent diaper rash um, for babies because it is, has antifungal and anti-inflammatory properties and it fights off yeast. So we do make the same uh, belly butter, the body butter for the babies, and we put our gentle baby essential oils in it and some lavender and that's it, something very, very mild for them. Okay. So between shea butter and cocoa butter, which one do you choose? Well, cocoa butter you can eat, and you can put it on your body, and shea butter is just for putting on your body. You're not supposed to eat it. I, don't, I mean, I don't really know why, but it's not a cooking food, um, but cocoa butter is, so there's that. Cocoa butter does have that really strong smell of chocolate, though, so shea butter sometimes wins just because of that. And cocoa butter, like I showed you, is really hard um, after you extract it from the nut or from the, the cocoa seed, the pod, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the shea nut actually is very, very soft already, soft texture. So um, the other two things that we used is the jojoba oil and the argan oil. So here, let me show you again. The jojoba oil is a little bit of a darker, richer color. And um, it's very similar to your natural body oils and is, is, it's easily absorbed. Um, it's extremely low on the toxic effects when used on the skin. There's like nothing wrong with using this at all. It soothes the skin and it unclogs hair follicles. And it's actually used by people who are balding because it encourages hair growth. So I guess that's why we use it as a base in our rejuvenate oil. <laughs> it sounds like a miracle. Um, it's excellent moisturizer because it is actually very, very similar to our natural body oils that we naturally produce. Um, it slows down the signs of aging, accelerates wound healing, stimulates collagen synthesis, um, antioxidants soothe fine lines and wrinkles, it's non-comedogenic, which means it doesn't clog pores, whereas where I was getting at before with the coconut oil, it, it does clog pores. It can be an irritant, even though everyone wants to use it for everything, it's actually not non-comedogenic, whereas jojoba oil and argan oil are non-comedogenic. They are absorbed by the skin and they last a long time and they don't clog your pores. Um, and like here it says it actually unclogs your pores. It's really great at removing makeup. It's perfect for acne, psoriasis, sunburn, chapped skin. Um, and it's a protectant and a cleanser. It fights harmful bacteria causing breakouts. So it's really great to use on your face. So this entire concoction that I've made here is good for your entire body, especially if you break out on your back. Um, especially with the hormonal changes during pregnancy. 
especially when having a girl, you tend to have a little bit extra breakouts in different parts of your body that you're not used to. So it really helps to clear all of that up. You can see this is kind of hardening a little bit. So it's getting a little bit thicker. And so in the jar, it's going to be a little thicker, but I think this is about as thick as it's going to be. It's very nice and light and whipped. The other oil, the argan oil, so this one is a little bit lighter color. Comes from Morocco, and you know it's good when goats climb trees to eat it. <laughs> there are so many great properties of argan oil. Um, the argan seed, the little fruit that grows on the trees is like a nut. They actually climb the trees to eat it because it has so many really great properties. The people there use it for all kinds of things like wound treatment, rash relief. It boosts cell production because it has it's so rich in vitamin A and vitamin E. Um, it's packed with antioxidants, uh, fatty acids, linoleic acid, and it makes skin softer, protects against signs of aging like wrinkles, eases inflammation, a whole bunch of really great things. They use it for pretty much everything um, in Morocco. It's just a very, it's like an, another natural miracle thing for your body. So all of these really great um, seeds and nuts that come naturally from the earth are really great from, for your bodies because people have been using it from ancient times on. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the rose water and I, I wrote that down over here because there's actually some surprising information that I found about using this rose water. Originally I used the rose water because I knew it was good for soothing like redness on your skin. Um, it's good as like mixing it with a toner. It also smells amazing. So I, of course I wanted this in my lotions. But I wanted to also let you know that not only does it soothe irritation in the skin, it's anti-inflammatory as well, which reduces puffiness, reduces redness in the skin, improves your complexion, and also has antibacterial properties to help reduce acne. So this entire conglomeration that I'm making here is really great for a night cream as well. You don't have to just use it on your body, but no matter where you use it, it's going to benefit your skin. Um, it prevents and treats infections, this rose water. It has antiseptic properties and can prevent and treat infections. Um, the antiseptic and analgesic properties have been known to help treat ocular disease and conjunctivitis. I'm not telling you to go ahead and pour this in your eyeball if it's starting to look a little red. However, it has been known to relieve infection in the eye. It contains antioxidants, helps protect cells from damage, um, helps heal wounds faster, and fights off infection of cuts and burns, and helps heal them faster with as well as scarring. Um, it also enhances your mood. So this is something that the other ones haven't done. Because of the aroma, um, it's a strong antidepressant and anti-anxiety uh, formula. And it relaxes the central nervous system. So just by smelling it, I think that's when we do our smell test. Every time we smell it, we're like, oh, and it's you can just see the euphoria start to happen and releases that those signs of antidepressant or the signs of depression. I'm almost done. Bye, Mary. Tyler, try it. Sorry. It relieves headaches. I'm gonna need to smell a whole bunch of this rose water here. Um. And this Bye. is why I haven't been able to come on here all day, which is why my product was frozen in the freezer <laughs> earlier, um, but almost done. Anti-aging properties reduces, reduces the appearance of wrinkles, soothes digestion, and that was what Lillian was saying, don't drink it. You actually, it helps, re, um, helps heal sore throats and actually helps in digestion by positively influencing digestion and relieve digestive upset stomachs, improve bile secretion, and further aid in digestion. So it has no known risks using it topically, topically or internally, unless of course you're allergic to roses, then don't do it because that would be bad. Of course, if you're allergic to anything, don't put that on or in your body. But now it is nice and creamy and I'm just going to, this is pretty much the consistency of what it's going to be. 
from now on. So it's settled out. You can see it's already melting in my hands and it is very luxurious. And this is going to be extremely moisturizing. It's going to be perfect. A little goes a long way. It does. It smells wonderful. I just love it so much. And it's going to be great for the summer because um, we're always outside in the summer and it's a good um, skin protectant for from the sun and if I put a little carrot seed oil in it that's gonna help block some more UV rays so um, anyway I know that was a lot of information I really wanted to share that with you because I don't just make things all willy-nilly like because I like to but I actually put thought into what it is that I make and why I make these things so if you're interested in getting some let me know like I said five dollars for four ounces we go for eight or sixteen ounces um, or multiples of four in different size jars and then of course we still have our soaps and our bath salts available and of course our wonderful hair products so um i guess if you guys liked it give me some thumbs up share it with your friends i uh, will be sharing it to a couple of groups if you guys like this stuff um and also like i said lillian and i are going to be starting our youtube channel it's called l2 production so i'll post a link on my homemade essentials page as soon as we get that up and running with more of our videos um, she likes to edit, so I'm going to let her edit. <laughs> anyway, if you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments or message me directly. Um, I know I've kind of ran on a lot. Are there any questions, Lillian, on there? Okay. Do you want to have anything else to say, Lillian? No. Here, I'm going to turn it around. You can help me say goodbye. Oh. Okay. Sorry, guys. It was really long, um, but I wanted you to get that information of why I do what I do and why I put things together the way that I do and the baby has about had enough and so is Tyler so we're gonna run thank you all for watching we'll talk to you soon bye, bye.